Egypt was the most advanced civilization, medically, scientifically. We still can't figure out how they built those pyramids. We don't know how they mummified the mummies. There are a lot of things we still can't explain. To understand Pharaoh correctly, we have to look into Kabbalah. Because here's also something people don't, don't really pay attention to. If Pharaoh was just some demented slave driver, and like, like the children's song, and Pharaoh just kept saying, no, 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 I will not let them go. If, if that's all he was, the Torah wouldn't be quoting him. The Torah wouldn't tell the whole story. It would simply say, there was an evil king, we got rid of him, let's eat. Pharaoh was not a fool. And in fact, some of his arguments are still fashionable today. Kabbalistically, God created the world and asked the people to use these very mundane, ordinary materials of life, of the world, to make a dwelling place and a home for God in the earthiest part of earth, in your money, in your food, in your clothing, in, in everything that we do. Pharaoh considered himself God. And so he chose a people, just like God chooses a people. And he said, take the straw and the mud and build me a home from the lowest materials. Not just one home, many homes, cities. Pharaoh's argument, particularly to Moshe, was, you want to go out into the desert to find God? I can't let you do that. That is so irresponsible. It's so dangerous. Don't you know what happens to people <laughs> who go out into the desert and build a compound and they look for God and wait for God? They kill each other. They're all going to die. So if I let you go out into the desert, I know what's going to happen. You're all going to drink Kool-Aid and you're going to kill each other, kill yourselves. Or you'll come running back because it is such an irresponsible thing to do. We are the cutting edge. They were. Egypt was the most advanced civilization, medically, scientifically. We still can't figure out how they built those pyramids. We don't know how they mummified the mummies. There are a lot of things we still can't explain. So they were on the cutting edge of everything. Uh, they were the future. They were, they were progress. And particularly Moshe, who grew up in the palace, Pharaoh said to him, you of all people, you could be here making history and you're going to take your people and go wander in a desert and become useless? What are you doing? I can't let you do that. After a couple of plagues, Pharaoh said, all right, fine. What do you need? Take a minion and go. He said, no, not, not a minion. We need our elders and our younger and our women and children and everybody. Pharaoh said, okay, you're crazier than I thought and you're not going. A couple of plagues later, Pharaoh says, all right, all right, go. What do you need? He says, we need all our sheep and some of yours. Pharaoh said, that's it. You're out of your mind. So he wasn't being ridiculous. I mean, of course, there was a cruelty to the whole thing. Now, the result is that Egypt is a mummy. It's a relic. I mean, the ancient Egyptians. They're gone. They're gone. Um, and the Jewish people who went wandering in the desert are still making waves in every area of what. Pharaoh's mistake was this. He thought the Jews, or Moshe, wanted to go out into the desert to look for God, to find God. If that were the case, Pharaoh would be right. Eventually, Pharaoh realized it's not Jews looking for God. It's God demanding the Jewish people's allegiance. And he said, well, why didn't you say so? If that's the case, you have to go. Go now. And he threw them out. Well, of course, later he had a little change of heart and he went chasing after them. But that, that was the... Um, the Tikkun Olam of that day, where Egypt 
grew up. And they understood, or at least Pharaoh did, that the Jewish people are not a people looking for God. It's God taking his people to himself, to Mount Sinai, to, uh, to set the plan, the vast eternal plan, into motion. So if we don't convey this um, true, I think, um, understanding of, of Passover and, and the Seder and the Matzah and all the rest of that, it really doesn't deserve eight days every year for 3,321 years, 22 years. So we really have to rediscover the powerful, relevant, and, and contemporary significance of uh, God took us out of Egypt. If you look at the words carefully, now with this in mind, you'll see that that's really what it's saying. God says, I came down to Egypt to take you to be mine. Not a messenger, not an angel. I came personally. Well, what, is, what are you hearing? What is it saying? If God hadn't taken us out of Egypt, we and our children, our children's children, would still be enslaved. What is that saying? That's not a technicality. We wouldn't technically still be slaves. I mean, Pharaoh dies eventually. Every evil lets up eventually. But then it wouldn't be that God took us out of Egypt, out of slavery. So once we know what to look for, it's all there. It's not like, oh, why didn't you say so? It does say so. But, but we, we interpreted it strangely. We got a little carried away on the frogs. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and hit the notification bell below for daily pearls of Jewish wisdom.